Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host, Liam, aka Himvar, and today I'll be reviewing The Lesser Devil by Christopher Rocchio. Welcome back to those who are already subscribed, and welcome for the first time to those who are new. I hope you enjoy your stay. This review will be spoiler free. The Lesser Devil is book 1.5 of the Sun Eater series by Christopher Rocchio. It is advertised as standalone, but I would suggest reading book 1, Empire of Silence, first. Naturally, there will be some spoilers for Empire of Silence in this, so if you have not yet read that and plan on it, then I would click away now. Though, for those who don't want to commit to the five book series, I would recommend reading this book, and now I'll go into my thoughts on why. Crispin Marlowe is our protagonist, the younger brother of Hadrian Marlowe of Empire of Silence. This makes him the second son of Lord Alistair Marlowe. We may think that this would mean that Crispin would inherit the Marlowe domain, but we actually learn that since Hadrian's departure, there has been another child born to the Marlowe family, a daughter named Sabine. In Devil's Rest, Hadrian has been gone for 30 years, but Crispin still feels his presence like a ghost haunting the halls, though of course Crispin does not know what happened to his brother, or whether he is dead or alive. The premise of the story is that the Duchess of Delos, Crispin's grandmother, is dying, and Crispin and his sister are to fly to the Ducal Palace in Artemia to see her. But they may not even make it there alive, as a culmination of a plot against House Marlowe is coming to fruition. Before their immediate departure, Lord Alistair, Crispin's father, informs him of a possible threat on their trip to seek their grandmother. He even seems afraid, which is no emotion Crispin has ever seen from his father before. Though I would point out that this fear is probably isn't from any emotional attachment to his children, more so that if they were to die, he would be at a disadvantage politically, and he does not like to lose. Crispin and Sabine then set off on a shuttle piloted by Captain Kyra, who is a character that you may remember from Empire Silence, who helped Hadrian escape off-planet. They were originally supposed to take a different ship, but a storm is blowing in, and they're not able to use that ship, as it's not able to take off before the storm hits. This actually would work to their advantage, as no one is expecting them from this route in Artemia. But as the back of the book kind of spoils, there is trouble on the way. The first half of the book, the threat is often mysterious and evasive, but it does get a nice twist halfway through. Like the last book, the prose is easily accessible and is very nice to read. It really is a pleasure reading Mr. Rocchio's writing in general. At this point in his life, Crispin is definitely an adult, though he is young still by Palatine standards since they live hundreds of years, but he always seems to manage to be bumbling about and embarrassing himself regardless of the situation. The thing I enjoyed the most is how he goes from living in Hadrian's shadow and being embarrassed by it and feeling down about it to being encouraged by Hadrian's shadow. He really does look up to his older brother, even though he hasn't been around for decades. And really by the end of this book, Crispin's character growth starts taking him out of Hadrian's shadow. As far as lore for the world, there is an interesting group of people present in this story. Oddly enough, they speak French and they seem to be Christian who are commonly called Adorist and considered pagan to those of the Chantry. Not surprisingly, those who worship Mother Earth seem to have a lot of false stereotypes about this religious minority. This Christian sect lives in archaic poverty. They have electric lights and refrigeration, but lack even air conditioning. Their weapons are what we would consider modern firearms today, but this is 19,000 years in the future. Alongside Christianity, we also get a glimpse into the Chantry faith through Crispin's mind. This is fun since Hadrian in Empire Silence is very much not a believer in the Chantry. One of the things I find most interesting about their doctrine, though, is that the Empire and the Chantry don't allow robotics to modify humans. It's blasphemous, because in a way it doesn't make someone human anymore. Though in my mind, Palatines are hardly human either. I believe there is some history involved here about machines in the distant past, that would probably enlighten me into why this belief exists, alongside it being okay for Palatines to exist. Well, that's it for lore. I will say that Christopher Rocchio's foreshadowing is decent this time around, though I did guess most of the surprises, but they were still fun to read. This story does have heart, and it showcases some of the human spirit, this time through different eyes. I'd still suggest reading Empire Silence first, but if you don't want to commit to the whole Sunny Year series, then I would at least read this. And if you want to skip this when you're reading Sun Eater, that probably is okay, but I would just go ahead and read it since it's only about 170 pages anyhow. But whether you want to skip this or skip the series entirely, 
I would still recommend this since it gives you a nice taste of Rakio's capabilities. I gave this three stars in Goodreads. It was good, but short. And three stars is normal for books of such length for me. But honestly, I wouldn't put too much stock in those star ratings on Goodreads anyways. At least for me. I mean, I do enjoy rating those books and I do enjoy reviewing books. But I'm mostly here to try to give you as much as I can an objective look at the book to see if you want to read it or not. This is available in paperback as well as audiobook and ebook. As far as I'm aware, it will be getting a limited hardcover release in compilation with some short stories set in the Sun Eater universe late this year. And these are my short thoughts. I would like to take this time again to thank everyone who watches these videos, likes, subscribes, comments. I really enjoy the conversations especially. And anyone who appreciates these, just tell me how they are so I can get better feedback on how to improve these. I'm thinking I'll stick with the format of just using voice for reviews and showing my face for book collection stuff, tags, and challenges and whatnot. I still have my blog where I post mostly about Dungeons and Dragons fiction. And you can also free to converse with me on Discord, either in the Excessive Detail Discord, the Wizardly Duo Discord, or any other server you happen to find me in. But once again, this has been Liam from Liam's Lyceum, signing off. Until next time.